Hello and welcome back to another video. Uh, in today's video, we are going to solve some body plot problems. Um, now, uh, there's a lot of different examples on body plot, so this is going to be part one of, uh, you know, the, the the series on on body plots. Now we're going to tackle this in two different ways, not videos, but ways, meaning we're going to go through examples where we are given uh, a transfer function and we are asked to draw the body diagram. Uh, the other one would be reverse engineering, meaning we are we are going to be given a, a body diagram and we are going to be asked to derive the transfer function. So that's kind of how we're going to tackle it. And for each part, we're going to go through many different examples. That way you understand the concept behind. Now, I'm not going to go through um, uh, the radical background because I'm going to make reasonable assumption here that um, you already went through that in class and you understand the background, but you just... Uh, you know, need a little bit more help into uh, approaching, uh, approaching, drawing it, um, and understanding really how to draw, to draw the diagram. And so, um, first things first, uh, you, you, as you can see here on this table, this is not a table. It's just uh, this is not a formula thing, but it's more of like directions on if you're given a transfer function and you have a constant, this is what you're supposed to do when you have a pole at the origin, when you have a zero at the origin, real pole and real zero, etc. And there's also conjugate um, stuff, uh, but I'm not going through it right now. I'm just going to start with the simple ones first. That way you understand the concept and you can go and run with it. So um, first thing, when you, whenever you're given a transfer function is to step number one, is to simplify the function to um, unity. What I mean by that is you're going to make sure that you do not have a, uh, you have ones on top and bottom, the numerator and your denominator. That's the first step. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to simplify the top 100. So then take out 100. Um, and then at the bottom, if I take out 30, simplifying, it's going to be S over 30 plus 1. So you're going to simplify to the lowest order at unity. That's the first step, step number 1. So the second step is to identify your parts. Your parts meaning, do I have a constant? Do I have a zero? Do I have, if I have a zero, is it at the origin or not? If I have a pole, do I have a real pole or real... Um, or do I have a pole at the origin? So part, that's step, step number two. So here, well, let me re-simplify this by saying, you know, 100 over 30, uh, that's 3.3. .3. And then, of course, 1 over S over 30 plus 1. Okay. So again, my second step is to identify my parts. So what do I have here? I have a constant. I have a constant at 3.3. .3. Do I have a zero? So your zeros would be at the numerator and your poles would be solving for S, of course, at the denominator. So your top is your zeros and your, your uh, bottom is for your poles. Do I have a S at the numerator? No, so I do not have a zero. So no zeros. I don't have to write that down. The bottom, do I have an S? Yes. I'm going to solve for S equal to zero. You know, the denominator equal to zero and solve for S. And that would be my pole. So S over 30 plus 1 is equal to zero. Therefore, my pole, real pole here, I just call it real pole, is at S equals to minus 30 okay so that's it for my for this particular transfer function I do not have any zeros I don't have anything else I only have a constant at 3.3 .3, and I have a real pull at s equals to minus 3 so now we can go ahead and get started on drawing the diagram so these are your first step so for um, if you have a constant, the note here says whenever you have a constant, you the magnitude would be 20 log of the constant. Okay, So for a constant, so 
So magnitude would be 20 log of whatever the constant is. And this is base 10, of course. Uh, 20 log of my constant is what? 3.13. So plug that in the calculator. And then I have 10, about 10.37, so about 10.4 db so i'm going to go ahead and draw that into here so this is a magnitude plot you could have a phase or magnitude plot so again pay attention to the question but here we are only going to do magnitude because magnitude and phase are pretty much the same you know once you know understand how to draw them so um i'm going to draw 10.4 db on um the graph so that's easy right because I have a constant 10.4 and um, the left hand side here is my db and this is my omega so 10.4 is about here about here so I'm just going to draw a straight line it's a constant there's no slope there's nothing constant constant 10.4 so this is for my 3.3 right there in my part again I only have two parts, a constant and a pole. So my constant is a straight line at whatever the uh, magnitude is. So here is 10.4. So this is for my constant. I don't know if I need to. Okay, let's just do it this way. That way you can. Okay. So um, let's use a different color here. The other part is my real pole. What does it say? What does the note say for a real pole? If you have a real pole, you draw um, uh, asymptote at zero dB until you hit your omega zero, omega zero in this case, if it's in this form, and that's how we made it in this form, omega zero would be 30, until I hit 30 and I have a negative slope at minus 20. What does that mean? For my real pole, I have a zero, low frequency zero 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 until I hit omega zero at 30 so this is about 30 and this is not drawn to scale but you get the point until I hit um, omega zero about 30 here so let me just um, yeah let me just put 30 here so you can see and then I have a negative slope for a real pull I have a negative slope um, minus minus 20 so let's just put minus 20 db here so be careful though when you when you draw this into a um, like a real graphical scale to respect your your scales and your slopes and whatever but I just want to show you how to how to do it so now I have so this is my pole again I identify my two parts so I'm only gonna have for the first part I'm only going to have two parts, my constant and my pole. If I had a zero here in my transfer function, if I had a zero, you know, if I identify a zero, I'm going to draw another one uh, for my zero. And then, and then the final results now, you're ready to add these two. So first you, 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 you identify your constant and you draw them, but your final body plot, body plot is actually the sum of these two parts. So what is the sum? Of, and this goes all the way down, right? This really goes all the way down. You know, and it's a straight line. I mean, it's a yeah slope of minus 20. So I'm going to use a different color to add these two. And the, the sum of these two is now the final body plot diagram. So adding the red one, which is the constant, and the blue one. So I have a magnitude of 10.4 no slope and a magnitude of zero no slope so if i add them together then of course my magnitude is 10.4 10 plus 10.4 10 plus zero is 10.4 so i will draw the just on top of it i mean you know so you can still see the red line and then i'm going to stop here why am i stopping here because i see the blue line also which I'm supposed to be adding to the constant because here I was adding, you know, the 10.4 and um, the zero, but now I have a um, negative 20 
and I'm a zero slope here. So what does that tell me? That my slope would be what? Um, would be minus 20. So at 30 here, I'm stopping at 30 here. And I'm going to draw a minus 20 slope. Um, minus 20. Oops. So I'm not really the best drawer here, but you get the point. So this is the final um, body plot or diagram or whatever. So if it was an exam and I'm given, you know, to identify, to given different graphs to say, you know, which one is the correct result, this is, this exactly would be it. So the green line here is my final, final body plot. Now, it can get complicated because you can have, you know, zeros here and, you know, different ones. And we're going to go through different examples. But for first example, that's how you only have two parts. You draw your two diagrams and you add them together. That's really what the concept is. So the, if you had like 20 parts, which is impossible anyway, so I'm going to draw 20 different parts and, and I'm going to add each one, each one and add until I get the final, final body plot. So this is really what the concept is. Pretty pretty interesting um, actually yeah. so let me know if you if you have any any questions and I'll be happy to help you in the comment section thank you for watching